Well, welcome back. Super um, excited to be here today. I got this email. I was at work and I, it was Dr. D. K. Geyer and I'm like, what is this email and, and what is she asking me for? So I was super honored when she asked me to come today to hear her and then also to give a little bit of my story about food. So I'm like, no, I don't talk in front of people. That's very scary. But uh, I'm passionate about this, this piece and I'm passionate about food. And if you know me at all or my friends or my family, they might think I'm a little crazy. Um, but my goal and my why that I follow for food is I want to be spunky when I retire. I met my husband late in life. We deserve to be happy and spunky and have fun. So I'm finding that there's a why and it makes it much more fun. It makes eating fruit fun. There's a reason for it. Um, so it's exciting. So it all started about four or five years ago. My husband um, was out of way at a work conference. Um, he was in another state and he called me, which was very strange because usually when he's traveling, he, we text back and forth because it's kind of busy and he's working. So it was at this conference and the, the conference was to how to work, how to survive with a high demand work job, with a stressful job. How do you survive with life? And, um, and win in life. And all of it was about how to maintain stress. And he called me and says, Joan, will you help me do this? And I'm like, what are you asking? He says, eat healthy. And I'm like, okay, I can help with that. I love fruits and vegetables. He's the one that likes different types of food. Um, so he came back, he came back with books and he came back with some websites. And so we figured it out together on how to make just better choices. You have, you have you can choose between different items. Which food are you going to choose? Which drink are you going to choose? Which are you going to take a walk? You're not going to take a walk. So um, that was probably about four years ago um, that we started the adventure. And it was just learning. Every book I could read, every training class I could attend to, to get more information. And I learned through the adventure is I've changed. I've learned different ways and learned different skills. My husband's job took us over to live in Europe for a year. And over there, I learned that food's very different over there. Their portion sizes were very small. When we ordered our normal food over there, they looked at us like, we know that's more food than you can eat in your one meal. Um, when you ask for a doggy box to take home with you, they like, no, we don't, we don't do those. You ride your bike to the grocery store every day and you get your food for the day and you take it home and you eat it fresh. And that's the lifestyle. It's very different than here. I came back and I got in my car and I went to the grocery store with my eight bags and drove home. So it was a very unique lifestyle that kind of really brought me open to, um, we have choices. Every day your choice is, why are you doing it? It was quite interesting. When I came back, that's when I, I was driving to work one day and I saw this billboard and it's, are you sick of being sick? And I'm like, who is this and what is she talking about? So I'm doing some Googling and trying to find her website and I went to one of her, a couple of her classes, I think I recognize you there before, um, her classes and I think it was the one, it was just ended up being you and I and it was about food. And I was explaining how my food adventure was to cut out some meats and some dairies and um, she was explaining that nutrients are important. I'm like, what's nutrients? That's not a protein, a carbohydrate. I don't know what that means. And she was talking about fruits and vegetables. And I remember sitting in and cross from you. I'm like, there is no way I am going to be full eating that. Now, that's all I eat. Bitter is better. I can't get enough arugula in my day. It's, it's just exciting. It's a new adventure and it's, it's a fun process for me. And I know with my friends and family, I'm probably the crazy one, but you know what? I have my why. My why is I'm gonna be spunky with my husband in retirement. And that's pretty exciting to me. It is definitely a different experience when you go through another culture and see how they eat and see what they do and how they relate to food versus the culture that we have here. Today's lesson is entitled, please do not eat that and never feed it to your children. So when you find out the why that I will describe to you, you will automatically know why you should never eat that. It blows my mind and I just cannot find an answer of how the United States is a melting pot of all the cultures that we admire for food and how they end up getting pulled into our pop culture. Everybody has their own style. We live in our own world and do our own things and we develop our own habits. 
And when we do that, we find that it normally involves food. When you're going out on Friday night, are you going out to uh, rake leaves with your friends? Ride a bike with your friends, go bowling most of the time. You're going out to eat. You're going out to eat on the nights you're not even hungry because it's on the calendar. It's already scheduled. You're going out to eat. So we spend our time living to eat instead of eating to live. At a grocery store outside of this country, you can buy a quarter of an onion. Why do you need a whole one? You cut it up and put it in your soup that you're making that night. You don't need the other three quarters. You need a quarter of an onion and a half a potato. We buy 20 times what we need to eat on Saturday morning and throw it all away the next Saturday morning before we come back with another whole bunch of stuff that we're not going to eat and throw away. Is that so ridiculous? It's what we're doing. So I'm going to try to teach you what to eat, what not to eat, and how to handle some of those complications that are associated with food. Food has become the basis for disease, obesity, cancer, heart attacks, kidney failure, and also an enormous profit for the masterminds of marketing. We view fast food as a convenience. We don't look at it as a corrupted source, a very expensive junk. We just love to eat it. And we rarely think about when we're eating it, that it does have the potential to harm our health. When it comes to making the right choices, it can really be a challenge. Is there any question why? It is so difficult for us to make informed, educated, healthy decision when food items, uh, pretty much everywhere we look, are being deceptively marketed to make them appear to be healthy choices. If you have seen or heard the campaigns for milk over the years, billboards, television commercials, they promoted drinking milk as helping you to develop strong bones and teeth. Then came the campaign, three a day. If you chose milk, cheese, and yogurt each day, they would help you lose weight. I'm not kidding, you can look up that commercial, three a day. And when that wasn't working, it became protein power. Milk was packed with protein. All these deceptive national campaigns made you believe and misled you to think that conventional dairy products needed to be in your diet. It was even added to the food pyramid or the food plate recommendations for dietary guidelines. No human being needs to ingest cow's milk to be healthy, no one. We should not count on dairy to provide any level of health in the United States. The next time you visit the grocery market, just check out the expiration date on conventional milk and compare it to the expiration date on organic milk. The conventional milk expires in seven to 10 days. Organic milk expires in four to six weeks. It's the chemicals in the conventional milk that make it go rancid, not the milk itself. Cheese. Cheese is probably one of those things that people love or hate. And if they love it, they really love it. Like they really eat a lot of cheese. But did you know that in the US, the majority of cheese is not really cheese at all. It is pasteurized, watered down milk, salt, with unspecified enzymes and unspecified amounts of cellulose, which is basic wood pulp or sawdust, yeast extract, which is another name for MSG, and that is a legal chemical added to foods, and it is considered more addictive than cocaine. Yogurt is not really yogurt either. In fact, nearly 90% of all yogurt products labeled in the U.S. barely meet the minimum standards to be classified as yogurt, and they contain very little usable nutrition or probiotics. With that introduction, let's get to the list of the nasty foods that we should never eat and we should never feed our children.
if they are made in the United States. Let's begin with frozen or fast food pizza. These items contain an extraordinary amount of food additives, the majority of which are banned in many other countries. Anything that is chocolate flavored because it is a sugar, high fructose corn syrup nightmare. It's not real chocolate. Bacon, hot dogs, deli meats, pastrami, and sausage. They are all listed by the World Health Organization as carcinogenic, and they are in the same category as plutonium, cigarettes, asbestos, and alcohol. Is that something we want to be eating and intentionally want to feed to children? Uh, that's your choice. How about potassium bromate and azodicarbonamide? are two bread ingredients you may want to avoid forever. They are banned in nearly every country except the good old USA. Fast foods noted for being as much as eight times more addictive than cocaine or heroin are fast food pizza, cheeseburgers, popcorn and soda, pre-made bakery items, fried chicken, bacon and sausage. Okay, no one raise a hand, just think about it. Uh, does any of this remind you of anything that you crave or you cannot stop eating or you're thinking about it just because I mentioned it? Because when I speak to people, they say, look, I can give up the soda, even give up fast food sandwiches. Like, I don't even like deli meat. We're good. I can give up bacon. But cheese? Seriously? You want me to give up cheese? Some people eat more cheese in a day than any other item. It is designed to make you addicted to it. The bread and the rolls used in fast food restaurants are banned in all other countries because of the ingredients. The fried foods are cooked in oils proven to cause cancer because they become denatured when used in high temperature heating. The fast food meats are normally about one third actual meat. The rest is fillers designed to make you addicted to the product. Oh, and we cannot forget wood pulp. Yep, plain old sawdust is turned into a filler. But as Americans, we are conditioned to choose foods from repetitive commercials, especially our children, our children ask you to buy them things by name because they learned about it on a television commercial. Advertisements for fast food chains are banned in Quebec on channels promoting programs for children. Sweden and Norway have banned fast food advertisements years ago. Saudi Arabia and the United Kingdom have legislation addressing fast food advertising. Why? What's the big deal about the fast food commercials? Fast food is partly responsible for the extraordinary increase in child obesity and childhood diabetes diagnoses. Processed food is a massive business, massive. They create a biological dependence through sugar, high fructose corn syrup, fat, salt, and yeast extract. Even when you want to change your eating habits, it's difficult. You just think that you need more willpower to stop eating those types of foods. It's so much more serious than that. I make the joke that in the future, we will have whole rehabilitation centers with entire wings devoted to cheese and popcorn addiction. We know fast food and processed foods are junk. Just ask an eight-year-old, which one of these is the healthy choice? An apple or french fries? The answer is always 100% apple. But then about 95% of them follow up with the comment, but I, I still like french fries. And when you ask an adult the same question, they get the same answers. We all know apples are a better choice than fast food french fries. 
But what do we know about foods that are being promoted as healthy? Fish is good, right? Well, yes and no. Farm-raised fish is basically only fish by the name. The so-called farmed fish are fed grains. Did you ever see a fish in the sea eating corn? Then they turn a putrid color gray due to the unnatural conditions they live in and the unnatural foods they are given to eat. To change that gray color because no one wants to buy a gray fish. They are then fed chemicals to help change their color from shades of destruction to a lighter color so they can be pumped full of more chemicals once they are harvested to make them look more like fish. Yum! Yum, yum, yum! Those light pink little delicacies of disease creating synthetic chemicals are on the shelves of the grocery stores and they are served to you in every fast food restaurant offering any type of fish. Yep, it includes sushi. Fish is healthy, but not farmed fish. Look for the words wild caught. You can find wild caught albacore tuna, wild caught sardines, and wild caught Alaskan salmon, for example. U.S. commercial meats are another huge market of deceptive advertising, and we have a perception that it is good for us. But U.S. commercial meats are banned in 160 countries due to the use of ractopamine. It's a dangerous health-destroying chemical, and approximately 80% of all the pigs raised here, 55% of the beef, and turkey production. It contributes to liver, kidney, and heart disease, mental issues, memory problems, arthritis, and colorectal cancer. For U.S. citizens that are practicing a high-protein meat diet, please, your pork, beef, and turkey sources. Seriously, you may decide that you want to change a few of the places you make purchases. Certified organic sources of beef, turkey, and pork are free from ractopamine, livestock, poultry, fish. They are all given antibiotics, steroids so that they grow faster, and hormones. A variety of other not really human-worthy additives. Because commercial production focuses on faster growth and turnover, food supplies are altered and create disease in the animals and in the people that eat those animals. So, okay, you've been waiting for the list. Here we go. This is DK's top 10, never eat this and never feed it to your children list. At the top of the list, farm raised fish. Number two, all processed meats. That includes bacon, hot dogs, sausage, deli meats, pastrami. Number three, all non-organic, commercially raised U.S. meats. So if you personally know a farmer that has grass-fed beef and is not using steroids and hormones and antibiotics in their cattle, that does not classify as the same type of meat as a commercial, large commercially produced U.S. meat. Number four, high fructose corn syrup for the contribution to our diabetes epidemic. Number five is dairy. Number six, popcorn. Popcorn is something that we have always viewed as being healthy. It becomes an instant colorectal nightmare. It is so difficult to digest. Number seven is all microwaved items. Once you microwave it, it contains no nutritional value. Soy, unless it is fermented, soy alters our estrogen production. Number nine, yeast extract by any name, including monosodium glutamate. And number 10, anything made with vegetable oil from baked goods to fried chicken. So there you have it, that's my top 10. I can see all of you dropping your head, shaking your head, smiling at each other because some of those 
on that list must hit a little bit close to home. Changing habits is tough. And as Joan so very eloquently stated in her introduction, find your reason to change. What is your why? Is it to be healthy in retirement or just to be a good influence on your family? Perhaps it's to lose weight or just feel better. Maybe to save some money for a lavish vacation or to try to reduce the amount of prescription medications you take. Whatever the reason, changing is up to you. And when you find your reason, habits will be much easier to change for the better. We live to eat instead of eating to live. Living to eat cuts our lives short. Eating to live promotes longevity. I just wanted to thank you for being an incredible audience today and to wish you the very, very best. Please just think about it. The content of this video contains the author's opinions, observations, thoughts, conclusions, and serves as informational and educational material purposes only. It is not intended as medical advice, medical diagnosis, or medical treatment. The author is not prescribing medical treatment nor attempting to negate current medical treatment. Should viewers choose to follow any of the author's recommendations without the supervision of a medical doctor, they are doing so at their own risk. Should viewers decide to implement any of this information in the video, they are solely responsible for any outcome. The statements have not been evaluated by the Food and Drug Administration. The products mentioned in the video are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease.